Good morning, uh, I am Samir Mehta and welcome to the ninth session of CC Live Cases .org. Uh, we have another uh, very exciting uh, left main case for you, which I'll be shifting to the cardiac cath lab in a moment. In the meantime, I want to inform the viewers that all the slides which are there on the website are present in the PDF format. Uh, you can download them. Thank you so much for so many of your emails which have been uh, making some valuable suggestions. I'll try to uh, make improvements on that. Uh, some excellent advice. Thank you all. Finally, let your questions keep coming. I'll do my best to uh, filter them out. Uh, uh, the pertinent ones, uh, I'll uh, uh, patch them straight forward to Samin in the cath lab and uh, that way we can all uh, benefit. Uh, uh, Samin, good morning. Uh, you're all set with your team. All right. Good morning, uh, Samir. And of course, uh, good morning to all our uh, uh, viewers. Uh, this is our uh, live case number nine. And we continue to change the theme of our case, uh, of the live cases. And uh, the last month, which we did a CTO, uh, seems to be a very big hit because a lot of people approached us later that we really went with the various steps and techniques. And uh, clearly, I welcome with my cath lab team here, with uh, Dr. Keeney on the left side and my fellows on the right side, uh, with the, this case, if we can put the slide on, of the 62-year-old, old, old uh, male who is a dentist. He has a recurrent adjustment class 2 angina now with a positive stress test for moderate infralateral and uh, anterior ischemia. Now, he has history kind of rather short in last two years. Of course, history of hypertension, high lipids, and positive family history. Had a cath in July of 08, which revealed distal left main bifurcation disease and underwent cabbage times 2, lima to LED and SVG to OM. Did fine, but uh, about a month ago, he started having some chest pain and had a stress test, which was positive, change from previously. So that about one and a half year, two years history of coronary artery disease. He has been on good medical therapy of aspirin, analapril, prevastatin, clopidogrel, and uh, azetamide. Now, he had a cath done on February 4th at outside hospital, which revealed two SL and left main, and we'll show you that, uh, with a distal left main being 80%, and a normal LV. And he basically had a lima to LED is good, but graft to OM, SVG has been occluded. And of course, there is an individual disease of the LED and up to his marginal with RCA being non-obstructive. And now question comes that we hear because of ischemia that native vessel revascularization or versus should we go after the graft and so that will be the theme. Now, if we show on to our angiogram, uh, if we can go there. Uh, now, this is the right coronary. We can go on to Sine now. Good. So, I mean, right. this is from the other institution? Uh, well, they, it was, but we just repeated now. Okay. Uh, the right coronary, just mild disease proximally. As you can see, rest looks very good, fine. Now, LV function always has been preserved. Maybe a very little anterolateral, minimal hypo, but otherwise good. And this is the lima, which is fine, which is what happens most of the time with the bypass surgeries, that the lima remains patent. Uh, and this is the lima, actually, the, if you see, it goes back and fills part of the mid LED, which has a very significant lesion. Uh, and uh, this is the issue here. Now, you can see here the distal left main and uh, the disease in that obtuse marginal. There is a large OM, uh, and of course, there is a large diagonal. Then uh, you can see at 12 o'clock the lima with a comparative flow. Now, here it looks like a little less impressive disease into the osteal circumflex, the distal left main, but clearly there is a disease in that obtuse marginal and uh, the large OM you can see here. Now, clearly the left main disease is very clear uh, in this AP cranial view. Uh, the now question comes is, what to do with this uh, particular case? Uh, clearly, that patient has symptoms, uh, need to do the graft to the, uh, to the OM has closed. You actually can see a little hint of that graft uh, thread uh, at about uh, 530 position. Andu, what is your overall uh, analysis uh, on the angiogram? 
Yeah, I think uh, going with the same uh, what Dr. Sharma just mentioned, the distal left main probably moderate, uh, angiographically we could say maybe 50 percent, but the majority of the disease is in the osteal uh, LAD angiographically and just uh, maybe uh, less than 50 percent uh, even in the osteal circumflex, but uh, very important is those two OMs are gone and whatever we call the OM or LPL has significant disease further down. Uh, this is what I think uh, angiographic analysis uh, would be and then there is a major uh, diagonal again with the osteal uh, disease about uh, something a little uh, surprising that uh, with the patent uh, lima to the LAD to have a marked anterior wall ischemia still. Yeah, I think it is uh, because largely of because diagonal. of that big <coughs> diagonal. That is right. I mean that is to me I, I absolutely correct and uh, this is what uh, and of course infralateral we know that uh, but uh, clearly there it is a uh, from the diagonal. I mean, that's what I feel. To and me, to yeah. me, the key really uh, so far in the case has been the AP cranial view, really, because uh, that is what truly demonstrates the severity of the distal left main. Right. Clear. Now, therefore, our goal was in this particular case that uh, try to really analyze where exactly the disease are today, because theme would be that how do we use IVAS in our day to day uh, life in terms of improving uh, the overall outcome of the drug eluting stent strategy. So now IVAS has been done. Now, now going back to the AP cranial view because there is always a question which view is the best view for the left main. I think distal left main you still can go with a caudal either RAO caudal, uh, LAO caudal but uh, for the osteal left main probably cranial is a better view whether it is uh, AP or uh, LAO. Now here we definitely see that uh, distal left main looks uh, more prominent here, but sometimes could be overlap. The osteal LAD, osteal circumflex disease with moderate left main in this view can make it look very significant uh, um, distal left main disease and that is where probably what we are seeing is that osteal LAD overlap with uh, your distal left main making it look uh, very significant. But the, just to confirm what exactly what we are uh, talking angiographically, how it would look with intravascular ultrasound, we can just show the ultrasound first we did of the circumflex. Uh, we knew the OM disease is significant. We did not go all the way down to the um, significant uh, disease there. This is just the proximal circ coming to the distal left main. Is it, are we showing the circumflex? No, we, yeah. we just need to capture the ultrasound images a little bit and we will we'll have that in a moment. Okay, we will keep playing it. Now, can you see it? But we never went this way. Uh, yes, we can see yeah. it not in as yeah. good a resolution yeah. as uh, we would like to, but uh, yeah. uh, some speck of calcification there in the. Yeah, this is yeah, a. Yeah, but we are going to let OM. it play again. Yeah. yeah. I, Okay, now we are going For some reason, uh, the, the camera person there will have to focus a little better on the IVAS image, but uh, Samin, please go ahead. Yep. Yeah, so this is uh, from the distal, we are coming proximal, but as you see it, there is a mild to moderate disease in the entire, uh, this is the OM that we first saw, first and two branches of the OM. No, no, keep All it right, we see the IVAS images. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is that. Uh, small branch, we keep coming proximal. Let it play, it is not difficult to see frame by frame like that. Yes, okay. we see it very nice now. This now. Is, yeah, that is uh, I think we are, we have finished the distal left main coming into the. Okay. Go back to where the distal left main was. So always the, the point is when you are doing IVAS that bookmark your points where you need to go back for analysis and little, you know, sometimes when you are doing automatic pullback, it may require a little pause to um, analyze carefully the segment. And, and this is a Boston Scientific uh, Galaxy uh, IVAS, the iLab we have incorporated into three of our uh, labs here. So it's a, you know, so the this is there. this yeah this is uh, I, I would say the osteal circ uh, coming into distal left main. You see eccentric plaque, but then truly not very obstructive. Go to the LED. Yeah. And that's the measurement based on. Uh, I mean, you start seeing a little bit of the 
left me in there, but at that area right there uh, I was getting like 4.4, uh, 4.5, yeah. Okay, let us go to the LED now. Change. Yeah. Not much of a calcification there. No. Okay, let us, uh, now this is the LED. Much more disease. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. more calcification and this is, uh, there. More, yeah. But same, it is uh, just like uh, disruptive uh, few rims of calcium, not calling for rotation or thorectomy. That it is not a um, uh, circular, you know, basically in our lab, we do not decide for rotation thorectomy based on the IVAS, rarely decide I should say. We decide by angiogram and in angiogram like this here also, you have two quadrant, in less than 180. So, by definition, even if you do IVAS, that you probably would not qualify this patient to do a rotation thorectomy. Of course, the osteal lesion, how do you need to treat them is a little different, but uh, there is a significant osteal LED disease which yeah, we saw in Just like that. I yeah. think uh, this is uh, the distal left main getting into osteal LED exactly where we measured that. Uh, we, uh, we got a 3.1. So, Anu, the plan would be to address the distal left main and the osteum of the LED? Right. Uh, yes, plus uh, take care of that uh, circumflex uh, branch OM. Excellent. And uh, I am curious what uh, what uh, your didactic Samin is going yeah. to be this morning. Okay, very good. Now we can go back to our slide presentation. Okay. Any questions, yeah. and any questions regarding IVAS? And any questions regarding yeah. IVAS? I mean, we can redo. If anybody wants to just put a question into uh, uh, on our web, that if we need to re repeat it and so, but clearly what we found mild disease at the osteal of the circumflex, significant disease in the proximal LAD and distal part of the left main going into the osteal LAD. And uh, the plaque is there is no disease seems to be at the osteum of the left main and it is confined to a distal part of the bifurcation. So, I mean my take on the case so far is uh, this is exactly a advantageous role of the IVAS here in trying to help you as to which lesion to address. Uh, this is a uh, uh, not uh, so straightforward and uh, some of the initial IVAS images were not clear, but the subsequent uh, run was just fine. So, we are quite convinced and uh, please proceed with it. Okay. Now, if we can go back to our uh, slide uh, presentations, uh, that the complex coronary case, which is post cabbage, the what are the important issues in the complex case? One, what do we, what is our choice of coronary revascularization nowadays, patients with the CAD, particularly more complex, not a simple distal LED lesion or so single vessel, but more complex cases. Then choice of graft during cabbage uh, and what are the data based on the arterial versus vein and there has been a lot written about the endoscopic harvesting. Then plaque modification in the complex lesions and lastly the role of IVAS and impact on the PCI outcomes and this is basically we will talk about. Now the clearly the what do you do, how do you define the complex lesion? In my definition, according to me what I would say the lesions associated with suboptimal angiographic results or higher procedural complication with routine techniques, those are our uh, complex lesions, which are vein graft, thrombotic lesions of acute MI, calcific, non-dilatable, resistant lesion. Many of them are the native lesions, native vessels where the graft is closed, uh, then bifurcation lesion, the side branch or osteal lesions, and chronic total occlusion. So, these, ba these basically confined uh, makes it to the complex lesion category. Now, overall, traditionally, we know that more the complexity, more patients have been referred for cabbage. And probably rightly so, that is how we have done over the decades since both PCI and cabbage choices are available, particularly with the multivessel disease and the left main. But we know that now in last few years, there have been a few randomized trial of a multivessel disease in diabetic. This is the subgroup of the cardia where DES was used, and it showed basically that carefully selected patients which are suitable for both revascularization, DES or cabbage, the major endpoints were identical, death, MI and stroke, only DES loses in the repeat revascularization. And similar message came up in that syntax trial also that death, MI and stroke at one year and then of course we have data of two years as identical compared to cabbage. And again, these are the patients, large number of patients, 1800 plus selected from 5,000 plus patients and the DES lost only for revascularization purpose. But very importantly, which I wanted to emphasize that both in the cardiac trial, look at the incidence of stroke, 2.5 versus 0, 
uh, in uh, DES as 0 and in the cap in the syntax is 2.2 versus 0 0.6 and clearly while cabbage has a long standing uh, great results and has been shown people are concerned about the incidence of stroke. Now what about the left main subgroup? Uh, this is actually the left main subgroup is isolated left main, left main with one, two or three vessel disease and you can see the height of the blue bar which actually once you have isolated left main in the syntax trial did kind of numerically better than cabbage and of course once you get to a more extensive left main disease with, uh, uh, with associated vessel disease that uh, outcome were in favor of coronary artery bypass surgery. But just to again, the outcome we are talking about are re-stenosis. Now, that's what we learned basically from this trial, from the syntax is incorporation of the syntax score in routine life. What does that mean? That angiographically, what has been shown, which very complex for interventionalists, they are very, they are very good outcome with the coronary artery bypass surgery. And therefore, you can see there that there is a gradient of outcome or MACE or MACI once you use the DES while for the cabbage irrespective of the syntax score they divided between less than 22, 23 to 32 and more than 33 that there was a clear cut gradient with the DES while for the cabbage irrespective of the syntax score outcome was identical and this actually was not only true for overall cohort also true for the left main and as you can see here therefore what we learned basically now the choice should be that should we worry about the left main and of course there are still a lot of proponent of appropriateness criteria where it has been said that left main and isolated or associated left main disease have a significant uh, you know outcome with the uh, PCI but we all know now that based on the recent guidelines also focused update that uh, PCI is to be even for left main. Now what we have done at Mount Sinai we have adopted the syntax score in our daily practice and patients with severe score of 32 and above with no contraindication to cabbage are getting the cardiothoracic surgical consultation that patients are not high risk for surgery that all these patients are getting CT consultation because we believe truly that these patients will benefit on a long run by, by undergoing coronary artery bypass surgery. This is the data for two years as you can see for the three vessel disease as well as for left main and of course this uh, European Society of 2010 will have the data for three years and of course as you know it will be for five years follow up. Then question comes is the graft, grafting choice. The, we know the vein grafts are routinely used for the for patient who go for uh, cardiac cabbage and uh, there is a definite occlusion rate within one month usually thrombosis occurs in two to five percent of cases. One month to one year it's an intimal hyperplasia which occurs in 5 to 20 percent of cases and after two, three, four years there is atherosclerosis of the vein graft which occur at rate of 10 to 15 percent. And just to remind everyone that it happens to everyone, even if, even if you are the ex-president, as we know that circumflex graft closed on, um, uh, on uh, uh, our ex-president uh, uh, Mr. Bill Clinton. Now, of course, the, the atherosclerosis is a little different of the vein graft were very friable associated with a higher complication rate uh, makes some about 6 to 8 percent of our total PCI and of course sending them for second surgery is very complicated because of high complication rate and uh, more pa these patients now are older and have comorbid condition so that it becomes job to the interventionalist that PCI the vein graft we end up in doing many times and of course because of the friable atheroma Many studies have shown they don't have a good long-term outcome. And of course, PCI of Lima uh, is very challenging because of tortuosities. And so, so that we many times we try to go into the native vessel. Now, we know the arterial bypass has an excellent long-term outcome. But clearly, that not all the time patients have arterial bypasses. There are many studies have shown that uh, arterial revascularization of three vessel has event-free survival of 10 years over 92 percent. Therefore, uh, issue always remain that if possible, patients should go for arterial revascularization. Now, the, one of the big issues which I mentioned, which we learned about the trials of the cognitive uh, dysfunction has been very well documented uh, in all the cabbage trials. So that now what we do in these patients, that PCI of vein graft versus native vessel once they come back like this particular patient, uh, options, uh, they, many times we do multiple intervention, they still keep closing. 
uh, despite DES and of course the trans uh, myocardial laser revascularization is an option and various other techniques of myocardial regeneration. The big issue remains is that hybrid revascularization that do arterial grafts uh, into the lima and which are not possible particularly the circumflex and right coronary for the drug looting stent. So that in this case if you fit into our criteria of a syntax score of 22 which he has, uh, it clearly was that the first try of the DES was appropriate based on the data. Now modification, uh, we know that now we have not only NGO, the IVAS which was shown here and FFR which will show in our uh, next uh, few uh, web co the live conferences and basically that complex cases are the one we need extra assessment by testing of so the intravascular ultrasound largely to improve our overall outcome. That question comes is role of IVAS uh, basically that there are about 1600 active interventional cath lab in the country and uh, IVAS is present in 80 percent of these labs. Both uh, the two vendors Boston Scientific and Volcano. I can tell you here at Sinai we have five labs, one actually sixth room we share with pediatrics so that we have all our five labs are equipped by IVAS. There are three of them are Boston Scientific I lab, two of them are Vol Volcano and then we use uh, the pediatric room for intervention. We have the one mobile, uh, the galaxy system also so that all rooms have the facilities for IVAS in uh, at Mount Sinai. And of course, uh, it is estimated based on the catheter sales that IVAS use in the country is going up. It used to be about 4, 5 percent and I'll give you the data of ours where we are now that it seems to be around 18 to 20 percent of all PCIs are being done using IVAS. Now clearly there is a wide variation, 5 percent to 90 percent range and I can tell you that Japan probably is the highest user in the world. The, it is said that 88 percent of the PCI in Japan are all done with the IVAS use and in United States I would say it will be about 20 percent. Now we know the IVAS is good. IVAS is superior to angiography for lesion severity and extent of disease, for vessel size uh, and the calcification, lesion morphology whether it is a thrombus or not it can define and of course your stent placement and mechanism of instant restenosis, it is under expansion or intimal hyperplasia or of, uh, the complications of PCI in terms of dissection, hematoma, stent crush and so. We use actually IVAS quite frequently in our lab on this landmark paper from, from uh, Gus Prashad and Abizad group uh, in circulation published uh, in 1999 that basically came up with this uh, in an epicardial vessel of 3 millimeter size the number of 4 millimeters square because that deferring PCI if the lumen was more than 4 millimeters square even if patient was referred for PCI did very well. So that 4 millimeter has become gold standard now uh, once we do IVAS and if it is a less than 4 millimeter as you can see here higher death MI and TLR uh, whether patient has diabetes or no diabetes which is on the right side. So that now for the left main this number is about 5.5 to 6. Uh, it is a little controversial whether it should be 5.5 or 6, but for the epicardial vessel it is a 4 millimeter square and that is what we commonly use in our lab for this purpose. And then question comes, can IVAS during PCI improve clinical results? Why? Why you worry about? Well, limitations are there is a cost involved, catheter about 600, there is a machine, time it takes maybe 1 minute for expert takes like here. Uh, we did 2 vessel IVAS in 2 minutes, but it is still time required and rarely there could be a complication. The rare cases of slight catheter dissection or thrombus formation are not unusual, does happen by use of intravascular ultrasound. But intravascular ultrasound really from the DES era, basically the increase of the IVAS in the United States occurred in like, occurred in like 2007 when the DES late stent thrombosis issue came into the picture that uh, proper stent ex apposition and expansion is important to decrease or potentially decrease late stent thrombosis. Why? Because you can get a good luminal cross sectional area, you can see a good stent expansion, opposition and many times you see some haziness within the stent and you know what it is? It is a plaque prolapse in the stent struts. There are some dissection edges so that you can really get a good result of your stent segment by using the IVAS uh, particularly whether you use it in every case or not. But the, but uh, in a more complex cases, it's very, very vital. The issues are still: does it decrease procedural complication, decrease death or MI, 
decreased TLR and should we be using in every. Now there are in the BMS era, we actually have a few randomized trial, few registries. As you can see here, NGO versus IWAS, there are 10 trials. It seems to be majority of them in a bare metal stent era showed that IWAS is better. Now, in the DES is totally different. Why? Because it's not that sizing the stent cross-sectional area because studies have shown that even moderate stent cross-sectional area are associated with a lower TLR at follow-up. It's a stent thrombosis remains a different issue. And I will take this landmark paper from, from, uh, the, from Washington Hospital Center, which published in European Heart Journal, that compared IVAS versus no IVAS. Again, no registry in the DES patient because there is no randomized trial in the DES group, which has shown that IVAS is better than no IVAS uh, or angiography driven. But seems to be that IVAS in a controlled, um, the case matched population of 800 plus patients was associated with lower stent thrombosis at 30 days as well as 12 months. And overall MACE was not different, but definitely lower stent thrombosis and uh, was predictive of IVAS guidance. Yeah. And uh, therefore, uh, some issue comes that you need a good stent expansion. What is the best way? Uh, that should you use a high pressure balloon or so? There is one study actually have evaluated, should you use a high pressure versus non-compliant versus compliant balloon? And it seems to be that non uh, the, the non-compliant high pressure balloon really gives you a better lumen. Will it translate into a lower outcome? Uh, I mean, lower event and complication is need to be seen. So that I would just want to conclude here that IVAS increases our understanding of PCI. It's not only a research and teaching tool, but it makes PCI, we understand a little more than just by an angiogram. IVAS guidance may improve outcome in PCI, subgroups of patients, especially issue about stent thrombosis. And that's a very, very important by optimal stent expansion. Now, the, what is the case? There is a patient who needs to go for surgery uh, and uh, you want to have a good, uh, sure that we have to stop the antiplatelet therapy, stent is fully expanded and opposed. You could make it a point that do I was good stent expansion, maybe this patient you can avoid, uh, uh, may, will decrease the stent thrombosis. The routine IVAS guidance should be used, probably not supported by the uh, various studies and we still need to have a randomized trial to answer this question, particularly in the DES era. Therefore, I would say that I was with the DES, your selective cases have a role. Now, there are a lot of work being done in the IVAS while we have 40, 45 megahertz transducer. We are coming with a 60 megahertz and forward looking IVAS. The CTO look, uh, IVAS, we can show you where the CTO is. There are a lot of work being done in this field and hopefully we'll know. Now, coming back to the Sinai, uh, basically these are our data. That uh, overall in last five years, the in-hospital death, urgent cabbage, QA or large MI, large MI we defined MB of more than eight times and a major complication of death, uh, urgent cabbage, MI or CVA. And you can see here, number has been about 0.5%. What has been the IVAS? The percent IVAS use actually has increased slightly, used to be about 8.6% in 2005, is about 11% now. Now, majority, as I mentioned, the part of still is understanding of uh, the lesion uh, requirement whether we should do a PCI or not. So the overall, I would say the IVAS use at Sinai is 10%, and that is still uh, the may some of us use more. My personal use is about uh, close to 5%, uh, and uh, basically that uh, in selected cases, use of IVAS uh, as shown uh, by the data as well as at Sinai, I would say will get us to the best result even in this DES era. So, I mean, excellent presentation. Uh, you made a good point as to where to use uh, IVAS today. And uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm actually, I thought the number at Sinai was uh, lower, but uh, very impressive. Now, I can see Anu has been busy at work. Anu, where are you in the case yep. now? I'm just, uh, I think I'm we engaged uh, and we are just wiring both the CERC and the LED. Excellent. I have a run through wiring into the CERC. And then we'll take a BMW going to the LED. Very good. Uh, Samin, uh, for an individual lesion, uh, how are you choosing between a galaxy versus a volcano? Yeah, actually, very good point. Uh, what happened is, because since they are all uh, set, uh, already uh, set in the lab, so that uh, the peripheral rooms and uh, 
maybe it's just a little more uh, research involvement uh, by our uh, director of endovascular intervention, Prakash Krishnan, with the volcano, so that uh, the, our two peripheral rooms have volcano, okay. and the other three color. coronary okay. rooms have a uh, have eye lab. But uh, but as we have both mobile volcano as well as uh, uh, the uh, galaxy, so that if need to be done, we can use. Uh, other cases also. Okay. And uh, important thing about uh, volcano is the virtual uh, histology. Is virtual histology. histology. Yeah, so that's what that I was. one uh, about uh, volcano. The, now the, let's take. We have wired both the lesions, and now question comes is let's take a picture because to me that OM uh, uh, compared to osteal circumflex OM lesion is more significant. Uh, we can go directly stenting with that OM now. You want? Then yeah. you want to put a yeah. two five. Yeah, this is the we are taking picture now. The two wires. Yep. Two five. Right. Two seven five. Yeah. Two seven five twenty eight. Zion. Now this actually I would have read the uh, they call it a OM. I would say this is a LPL, LPL. Yeah. posterolateral branch, and for coronary anatomy teaching, which we really focus very uh, importantly every Thursday in Mount Sinai for our cardiology and intervention fellows from seven fifteen to eight o'clock. Every Thursday, Ex only exception is uh, our Thursday if it is a holiday or during the symposium that Thursday, but our remaining uh, 49, uh, uh, 48 or 49 Thursdays of the, uh, uh, you know, like Thanksgiving, of course, uh, because of holiday and so, that remaining 14, uh, 8 or 9, we have the coronary anatomy round, during which we ask our in cardiology fellows. Uh, usually to show, and many times you are nurse practitioner, and of course in a complex case asking our interventional fellows uh, to read an angiogram and go over with the anatomy. Now our common teaching is that the vessel in RAO view, branch of circumflex which is going uh, down and out, it's a more of a obtuse marginal, and which is running more parallel, the main course of the vessel is more parallel, will be the posterolateral. And therefore I would call this as LPL1. But since we have the operative report, we have the cath report from the outside institution, I wanted to just keep it that consistent and not create a new, a different vessel. Pull back. Pull back, yeah. Now, this is the direct uh, 2.7528 millimeter uh, Zions V. All right, you look to be yeah. adequately covered there. Yeah. Uh, Samin, uh, another uh, uh, three part quick question. Is your volume of surgery at Mount Sinai up or down, volume of PCI up or down, and reimbursement up or down? Very good. The, I think the, the, all like the, the questions are question. both a yes and no type of question. The, basically, yeah. the cabbage volume, yeah. I would say that part of uh, since our overall growth of cath lab, the cabbage volume is slightly up. Uh, the PCI volume uh, is significantly up. Uh, last year, we actually had uh, over 12 percent growth from uh, 50 to 70, uh, uh, went to 5,800. It's a large. Uh, 27520. Yeah. No, 20. 20. 20. 20. Yeah. 27520 uh, NC Voyager. So the PCI number now, as of today, uh, compared to last year, last year was a you know, great year with the 5,800. Uh, this, so far, we are about 3 percent plus year to date compared to last year. The question comes is the reimbursement. Overall reimbursement has gone down uh, per case. Reason is because of ambulatory PCIs. Ambulatory, even if you keep the patient overnight, by definition, those patients are called uh, ambulatory overnight, and you get a reimbursement of the ambulatory. Now, but in patient, because of complexity increasing, uh, that overall uh, is still in uh, that uh, for the reimbursement of uh, the overall payment to the institution on the PCI cases uh, has been uh, quite up just because of the volume and appropriate coding. And this is a big issue nowadays. Many centers, uh, they're concerned about which case to be, uh, should stay, should not stay, and are, do you have written protocol. We actually have our protocol, which is available in our protocol book even, which we have sent to many uh, uh, centers. Use them because that's very important for the appropriate coding. Now, this case, as you can see, uh, that after the stenting, there was a little ga the unexpanded uh, stent segment. Uh, the, the don't go with the higher pressure with the Zions because of the stent expansion at, or balloon expansion at the corners. So that just go with the high pressure. And uh, I'm very proponent of the long uh, balloons uh, 
like in this case uh, and uh, the this is a 2.75 20 nc voyager and go to about 20 atmosphere in some cases you may need to go to a higher pressure and uh, the up to 24 or 26 but then in those cases use a focal uh, balloon you don't need to have a large uh, the size balloon now we are ready to take a picture to see the edges and things are okay yeah, that yeah. looks so quite all right uh, just a little spasm yeah. probably spasm. The yeah you know what i actually routinely that we always uh, do routinely a little bit of distal edge is not unusual if you do i was here that is a more of a plaque vertical plaque plaque displacement and that actually has been shown in many of those early trials of uh, our ptca uh, therefore i i usually in a long lesion advance the balloon few millimeter distal at two atmosphere very short inflation for few seconds and really makes it normal you uh, would you would not have anything against a strategy of giving a little nitroglycerin there and taking a look though uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, just another uh, point of uh, doing the procedure and doing this if you see us you what you have done is we bring the balloon back in the descending portion of the and leave the balloon in the guide and take a picture right and that really helps Save us in this situation you want to go back and a very rare complication of 0.5 percent of uh, if there is any kind of perforation you have your balloon right there just go back in and you are able to dilate the vessel immediately the so you are not taking anything out at this time because the taking out going back in is again a couple of minutes of work Circ looks very good there uh, Samin what is the uh, routine pressure you are using uh, to uh, expand the Zionster yeah, Zions itself with the stand balloon would say the more than 12 is contraindicated and uh, usually about 8 to 10 and then bring a high pressure balloon slightly usually actually I use a quarter size lower so if need to go to 20 24 atmosphere uh, it uh, does not uh, even non compliant balloon do grow slightly so that just to go uh, 20 atmosphere but the stent balloon of the Zions uh, deploy at uh, 10 or 12 atmosphere only no more than 12 12 yeah. If you That's need to expand, yeah. yeah. You're you are going to cause a dissection and you'll end up in putting a stent unnecessary which you didn't intend to. That's a 3 yeah. balloon there? What yeah, is this is a cutting balloon, 3 to the austral LED. Excellent. Yeah, it's a 3 6 millimeter uh, flat dome. Uh, we actually at usually 8 to 10 atmosphere and the two inflations, again technical tips point of view, bring back into the guide and go back again. So th those blades will rotate, so they will do a little more effective. Uh, debulking. And there is always a question can you leave a wire in the side branch when you have a cutting balloon? You can do that, like you have. Have, you, have you been using uh, the angio sculpt also for similar cases? Yes. Yes, uh, actually. Uh, not so much for the native osteal, but more for uh, uh, instant restenosis, only because you are able to go higher pressure with that balloon. Excellent. So, I mean, another question for you. What is your standard equipment for a PCI that uses a drug eluting stent with the pre dilatation strategy? Which guide do you use? Which guide wire? Which balloon and which stent? Yeah. The, actually, the guide wire, the guide usually are six French, unless it's a bifurcation region like this, we'll go with a seven. And uh, for the circumflex, if it's involving circ, it will be a Voda guide. And if it's involving LED, will be a CL curves. Uh, for the right coronary, it's either Lima guide or in a more angulated uh, and distal vessel and tortuous vessel, we'll use a AL 0.75. Now, Just the wire wise, the wire is uh, run through uh, in about 60% uh, of cases and fielder in remaining 30, 35% of cases, the workhorse wire. Rare cases are those subspecialty wire because of tortuosity or total occlusion will be, we will use. And uh, the guide is the same, the Boston Scientific Mark Guides. Mike Main Mark. reason is because you see the tip, they are very soft tip. And even if, uh, you know, uh, the cases where you want to get your guide into the main vessel, whether it's Prox RCA, left main and all that, we uh, rarely face guide induced uh, dissection at uh, any uh, where, either the left main or the other question also is, if you have a long left main, which we are talking more than 10 millimeters, even if you are doing LED, VODA is a better guy to give uh, you a good support. What about the balloons and the stent? Yep. And the balloon basically, a pre-dilatation balloon is always has to be a shorter than your stent length. The, the, as long as we keep that in mind, 
so that use a, a either sir? either yes yeah, sir either the voyager or the maverick 2 or the balloon uh, the post dilatation balloon uh, are either uh, the nc voyager or a quantum maverick uh, of various sizes uh, of course right from 6 millimeter to uh, 20 uh, i favor 20 because majority of my stents are 20 plus uh, millimeter in length now what we are doing is there is a little bit of haziness in the stent struts as well as distally into the circumflex yeah and we are putting the iOS, knowing that we are focused on the iOS today, make sure you have the screen, go a little further, yeah. Uh, we should show that on the screen now and start the pullback, yep. Can we uh, switch to the iOS screen? You see it very yeah. nicely now. Yeah. yeah, stand, same, there is a lot of plaque, it is uh, opposed to the wall, it is not hanging but it could use some extra expansion. Right. Probably a 3O. Yep. That uh, 3O or 3O definitely 20 millimeter. Right. But, there you but see areas it is uh, opposed to the vessel wall. Sometimes people get confused that uh, it is under expanded. If you get a lumen of uh, 6, uh, 7 millimeter square throughout and is touching the stent uh, vessel wall, to me I think you have finished the work. Now you see here, this is where we are now. The proximally and I will show you this later. And why I did this, because there is a small area in the circumflex after the ostium uh, that there is a plaque significant and now we are at the ostium and of course we have come back into the left main and so. So there is a disease in the proximal circumflex and this is what I was, if you are using it uh, methodically, will tell you that there is a disease in the adjacent segment. We can now. Yeah. That uh, there is an adjacent segment, whether it is, uh, we can play now. That and I'll tell you to calculate the lumen cross-sectional area at one particular point. Now this yeah. is the Here stent. Is the stent gold expansion. No dissection there. Uh, this area definitely we need to expand. Stand a little bit more. We could take a three o twenty NC Voyager, please. Yeah, this area. Go, go one bluff, a little back, back, slightly back. Yeah, good. Let's calculate that. This is the area actually, which uh, if you see uh, on the angiogram, I'll point it out that it's a very hazy uh, appearing. And why? Because of this plaque. Look at the plaque burden. Uh, good. So this is a one point, uh, barely two eight. millimeter with an area 3 of uh, three point eight. And what is the plaque burden total? It's uh, probably 60 percent and so will be so. This is that area. Now we can go to the, our angiogram. This is a 3 -0. Yeah. We can go back to, yeah, good. So now and play, play this one so that we can show uh, that area just uh, of the circumflex minus. Yeah. yeah, this area. See where the my eye was watch? That haziness. Is that area just at the level of the catheter? Look, I can yeah. tell you that uh, short of IVUS, that is very easy to overlook. Yeah. Therefore, now our selection, whatever extent we decide, so that it should cover that area. And this actually will be the part of uh, the new other imaging modality like infrared and so, uh, spectroscopy, that these lesions many times at the corner of the edges, the presence of these plaque at the edge and your stent is uh, landed in that area will be associated with or could asso be associated with uh, maybe a higher stent thrombosis. Uh, of course, uh, there is some issue in terms of uh, re stenosis. Though now it is a 3 uh, 20 NC Voyager at 20 atmosphere. I have to go a little bit slow again. Select uh, the stents for the, I think SKS is the best way. Yeah. Go 2 millimeter distance. The same, I be very low to atmosphere just for a few seconds. The distally. Now, this particular case, uh, as far as anti thrombotic uh, therapy, this patient actually was on Plavix already, uh, and uh, Vicky actually has tested the Plavix, which is 57 percent inhibition, and that is good. Aspirin, uh, An aspirin patient is aspirin sensitive. 
at 57% inhibition, anything more than 40% in my opinion is fine. And uh, so the question is should you change it to Prasagrol but patient already on Plavix and if patient doing fine and you had tested, they have more than 50% inhibition that in is my opinion is not two, required. 275282. LED also, you want to put 30? 3028 and 230? Yes, uh, 380 for the LED. Yeah. Anu, by yes. Valerudin as uh, yeah. anticoagulant? Yes. Yes, yeah. We have Samin a ACT of 350. Yeah. Excellent. Samin, at this stage, you have 12 minutes to finish the case. 318 for the LED? That will be too big. Okay. 2.75. Yeah. We're taking a picture now okay. and then decide uh, uh, Give three uh, because we have to, to do the IVAS. Yeah. SKS has a yeah. plan for yeah. the distal left. Right. I think that probably will be the best way. That 18 in the pro uh, proximally and uh, 3028 into the circumflex. LED first. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's 18. Mm -hmm. Right, we need to cover that area. 28, yeah. I'm telling you, it's too big for no. the left main. Moderate pressure. It will not expand. That was the curve. I mean, another uh, unusual, uh, slightly unusual question. What's your uh, percentage of the radial axis, and uh, is that a part of your fellow's training? Yeah, actually, now uh, our uh, radial number is just about uh, the crossing, you know, getting into the double digits because few of our attending uh, but they use quite a bit of radial, and uh, we, the patients, uh, the fellows get good training because still. Uh, taking uh, every month uh, about 13, 1400 cases of the 10 uh, percent being done with the radial intervention, we still have a good number. Uh, but it's not a, I would not call Mount Sinai as the radial lab. Your radial to me is that if you are doing more than 50 percent of your intervention as a radial, that is qualified to be a radial lab. So, the, but that do we get enough exposure? Or do our fellows get enough exposure? Are we comfortable with the radial? Answer to that is yes. And we have a nice uh, board, arm board actually in those cases, so that those patients with the potential radial are, the board is placed. The besides, just as a selected strategy in patient with obese, PVD, that somebody with a BM, uh, BMI of 30, uh, 30 we uh, prefer radial approach uh, along with, uh, uh, you know, any patient who have peripheral vascular disease and so. Now, uh, you can see here, we can go few millimeter in with both of them. Right, because that would cover that little area yeah. which appeared to be of concern in the circum. Yeah. Samin, tell us uh, yeah. now the three-part strategy which you routinely use to dilate uh, for SKS. Yeah. And this actually will be the ideal case and then of course we will try to show from the uh, IVAS uh, point of view that how does it look. So we are good. So now we are going to go 10 atmosphere with both. That this is the step Pro number one. Got it. Uh, probably eight because it's Zion. Eight. eight yeah. Zion. So both are three. So the eight atmosphere. Now you can As see. As predicted, we see that austral uh, LED has not really opened up. So now. we go one by one individually. One second. I'm going first. Yeah, and the, here I'm going to go to uh, about twelve to fourteen, not more, because in the cipher we used to go to higher, but at twelve to fourteen here. Now you can see at least the stent has expanded now, while the balloon of the LED is still there. So the, you crush a little bit, but that's okay. But there is a balloon, and now uh, Anu is going to the LED, same about 12 to 14 atmosphere. No, no, I, I'm 10, and I see a good expansion. Yeah. And if it's so angiographically good not, expansion, yeah. that's okay. Not you don't going need high. to get crazy yeah. about it. Okay, negative. And now we'll go the fourth step. So the each individual and the fourth step again at eight atmosphere. Eight to 10. The stents have been expanded. See, that's not much better now. I get it. I'm mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, just one second because there was see, this, this the coordination. Yeah, therefore, no, we are no, going no. to go back yeah. again. Go, yeah. go. If you see the osteal circle actually has not expanded. I'm just at 8, eight or eight. 10. Yeah. And we are I'm, I'm at 8 yeah. and then uh, the LED is nicely yeah. expanded. The circle was not expanded previously and he has gone up to 12. 12. 
and we so, are going to go simultaneously down. Yeah. So this is very important. Not only simultaneous inflation, simultaneous deflation also. Now many times in the left main here, it's protected left main, so that uh, it's a less of a, a hemodynamic uh, compromise. But you need to be very quick sometimes to go negative. Uh, that as you can see here, multiple. Uh, uh, this is the time when patient will feel some. Now, how are we going to take this balloon out? The same. First thing you do is uh, get both your wires out so that uh, they are not in the micro capillaries. Guide is completely out of the vessel, and I'm holding the wire with the two fingers, and then the balloon, both of them, in my right hand. Now I'm doing some jiggling movements. Again, the guide is uh, getting sucked in. If it doesn't come out, pull back again. The wire is coming, going in, pulling out and then it comes out. Now, if the second time, if it does not come out, then you have to take it out individually. Same thing, okay. Take a picture. Yeah, take a just little picture before, uh, so that in case you need to advance something individually. Looking very good there. Yeah. Same, yeah, the we have two balloons, the descending okay. portion of the guide and took a picture and now we are coming out. Now we are going to do IVAS. Of which arm? Both arm? Yeah. Okay, now ready to take a picture. Now this is again uh, that uh, always aspirate when you are taking your balloons out that uh, always aspirate basically the wires, what happened to the wires which is fine. I mean, I'm sure the Anu must have been surprised that we are doing the IVAS because usually, from our point of view, this case is done. But now today is the IVAS, so that we need to show, based on the IVAS, that uh, do we need to get some further um, uh, expansion or we are truly done angiographic. Let's take a picture anyway now. Wait one second. It would be fascinating yeah. to see yeah. how the carina yes. looks. Yes. <clears throat> Good. So now, aspirate again. Uh, we are given a little bit of nitro, which is reasonable. So that there no issue in terms of a spasm. And take a picture. And you can see the little carina right there. No. And we'll be now on the IVA. See this the, from all practical purposes we are done, but uh, the, just to emphasize on the since we are used uh, this is the IVAS guided our strategy, not only the stenting, uh, but, you know, we did a pre stand deployment and now of course uh, the at the carina of the bifurcation so that we just need to uh, see uh, how it is whether now if we require uh, a re-expansion of any portion of that bifurcation we need to use the two stent uh, two balloons non-compliant balloon uh, at uh, of the similar length so length should be similar and uh, the, uh, then of course you can go to high pressure whatever requires Okay, now we are going into the circumflex. Good. Since we post dilated there, no, why don't you go from the stent struts? Yeah. Okay. We pull back into the circumflex. Yeah. Looks better expanded yeah. there. Yes. <laughs> this will be dilated with a 3 O, a 20 at 20 atmosphere. Clearly, you know. it has gotten a better purchase, better stent expansion, uh, less plaque remained behind the stent struts. And of course, uh, later on with a longitudinal reconstruction, we'll see if there's any other area will require extra squeeze. Now we are coming into the proximal stented segment. And uh, soon we'll be coming at to the level of the carina, which we should see the two yeah. dumbbells. See yeah, that? There, there. Yeah. It's just a short carina, which is fine, about two millimeter. And can, we can stop there. And now we are going to go to the LED side. Uh, now, if you play, play that once again.
you know one could slightly expand that even a little more on the circumflex but yeah that at the kind of a edge you know which uh, that distal portion so now let's see the ostium that is it touching the wall and now you can see here that and that is how basically this two dumbbell will look okay, okay we are now, now in the lad lad from what you have seen uh, with the ivus so far you are happy with the carina there yes okay we are coming yeah. back now here actually we could use a led ostium may we can open little more mm -hmm. i think this is now go back again uh, show that from the beginning yeah picture mm. yes show that uh, led once again yeah now see the distally you can you we can definitely use more expansion but see that ostium this is the where there was some calcium this is about 160 80 degree arc of calcium and the lumen is definitely small uh, and therefore what we will do now because we are doing iwas guided as i said angiographically could have been done but in this particular case with the iwas guidance that uh, we are trying uh, going to go through uh, and uh, just dilate Uh, that area of the ostial led which is seems to be not expanded completely so that now we'll use the two high pressure balloons uh, give us a 230 30 15 um 230 15 uh, uh, 12 or 15 quantum maverick or um, nc voyager whichever we had 12 and 15 same length because so that you not worry about whether you are covering proximally and uh, because it has to be the proximal part about there is an overlap of the stent about 4 5 mm proximally that you are fully covered now angiographically we can say that this case actually we would have been done with it but since we know now and whether it should translate into a lower re stenosis or so in the future is a different issue but since we have used the iwas and follow with the idea of the iwas that we will go back and just dilate the ostium of the LED uh, further. This is a uh, uh, we are using the yeah that uh, we have two three o fifteen the NC uh, sorry quantum quantum yeah it's a quantum maverick and the same we'll try to do a twenty uh, atmosphere dilatation angiographically actually looks very good. I can tell you that this case if we not done. for the IVAS we done uh, clearly. Uh, and uh, but just want to show so the I mean, technique. What, what about the ostium of the diagonal in this view? Uh, yeah. yeah. You want to see that? Hmm. Is there? Yep. The maybe uh, we need to work on uh, ostium. Now we actually took um, the um, picture. Yeah, it it looked yeah. a little this thing not yeah. to you know take you away from the target which you have in yeah, mind exactly. and you know it it it's easy to get distracted with all these uh, lesions in a patient who's been bypassed. I uh, yeah. What no, about some? Uh, uh, are you using any yeah. stent boost? Yeah, in this uh, you know only problem is yeah. See this this actually I remember this this is the case we did in uh, um, other views. It's a little force shortened. Right, right. There is a mild disease, but uh, therefore we decided actually before the case that we'll leave, leave this ostial uh, alone. That's right. Yeah, and I know that we are left with about 30 seconds, and hopefully we do uh, this dilatation, and uh, then we are done. Yeah, going back to your question of uh, stent boost, uh, we yeah. do have stent boost in uh, both the new Philips uh, labs, uh, but again the use is probably less than one percent. No, but one Last of the reason in this case will be a different because of the clips. the surgical clips and those we really cause lot of issues mm -hmm. in terms of stent boost now we are going with the two both of them are uh, here that at go to 60 where are you going i'm uh, the led yeah. should go up yeah go, go yeah i'm actually since the circ was good so you can go a little higher 20 atmosphere yeah okay and take a last picture and then we will be done okay one more in the meantime once again a reminder to the viewers uh, all the slides from the last 8 uh, cases plus uh, the one from today are going to be available in a pdf format and uh, our next recording will be on april the 20th at 9 in the morning right just go go
Okay. Samin well, looks very good. Very excellent, good. Excellent demonstration of the benefits of IWAS. Final words from you and Nanu. Yep. Uh, actually, the, just basically, I would still say that if you take a take home message, technique for IWAS in PCI with a DES, that optimal technique and strategy are crucial to avoid any potential complications and good stent deployment. Now, part of that is uh, that uh, associated lesion preparation. IWAS may be useful in complex cases and situation of potential high risk for stent thrombosis. And uh, just because of that, I used to say the DS still remain our main strategy. And do you want to say something? We are done here. Yeah. I think uh, one other point where IWAS is really necessary is in uh, instant pre-stenosis cases. Yeah. If you have an instant pre-stenosis, it's very important to know the mechanism of uh, re-stenosis. Uh, most important uh, being is, is it intimal hyperplasia versus under-expanded stent where uh, IVAS is a very important tool to really make a, a decision how to treat that patient uh, uh, in that kind of situation. Anu, okay. excellent uh, final uh, case. I, I'm, I'm sure that translates into a great uh, practical advantage. Uh, thank you all for uh, doing uh, another extraordinary case. Uh, congratulations to the team. Uh, uh, Please keep sending uh, any, any questions you have, uh, any feedback, and uh, once again, all this, uh, uh, the slide format is available for you in a PDF format. We will see you during the next recording on April the 20th. Thank you. Thank you.